Hi everyone and welcome to another piano comparison video here at Marion Pianos. Today we are comparing two of the great rivals of the 20th century. Sounds very, very important. Uh, the Kawai K300 and the Yamaha U1, two of the most popular 48 inch upright pianos on the planet. We have compared them in the past, but it's been almost five years since we came out with the last video and there's been even more updates that we wanna to talk to you about. Thank you so much for joining us. If it's the first time that you have been to our channel, if this video has found our, your way to us, then we would really appreciate if you subscribed and hit that notification bell. We'd love to see you back for more videos, commenting and joining our ever-growing community of piano lovers. So without further ado, let's get started with the K300 versus U1 comparison right away. Let's start with the Yamaha U1. This is a 48 inch piano from Japan. Uh, and if you didn't already know before you saw this video, the Yamaha U1 is probably the best known upright piano in the entire world and likely in the history of the piano industry. The U1 really led the way in terms of the Japanese invasion, for lack of a better word, uh, takeover perhaps, um, of the North American piano industry really starting in the late 60s, but picking up significant momentum through the late 1970s and into the 1980s. It was really the first piano that presented a full spectrum tone, it was high quality, the cost was nice and low, and they were super consistent. And so for piano technicians who were used to dealing with North American designs which weren't particularly well refined, this was a breath of fresh air. And so starting with the Yamaha and then followed uh, closely behind by several of Kawai series, um, both Japanese manufacturers really started from a very small percentage of market share to the point where they literally had dominated the majority of sales uh, for upright pianos in North America uh, through those decades. Uh, and so the U1 become, became very well known, not only because of uh, the popularity of the brand, but also because Yamaha had the, uh, I'll, I'll call it the foresight, uh, to keep the model name the same for decades and decades and decades. And so unlike Kawai, which has gone through something like a dozen different series of upright pianos, there's the BL series and the US series uh, and the K series and the, and the uh, oh my goodness, there's so many. Uh, the U1 has pretty much been called the U1 right from the beginning. And so rather than changing the model name, they simply um, added a letter after that to designate every time there was some type of an evolution uh, in its design. So a U1A and a U1B, uh, U1H, um, all of these different uh, model codes. Um, the instrument is and can be described uh, in, in a couple of fairly simple ways. Uh, for one, it produces a good loud tone once you uh, kind of really get the soundboard activated. Uh, and it's a nice clear tone. Uh, it can sometimes be described as a bit uh, sharp tone, but it's a high tension scale design. The strings in it are a little bit shorter. Uh, the soundboard is not tapered, it's a flat soundboard. Um, and so this results in a number of um, musical effects. Uh, for one, when you really start to push the instrument, there is a bit of a tendency for the piano sometimes to distort uh, when you're really up in the upper ranges. Um, but on the other hand, uh, the fact that it's not a tapered soundboard, at least in the past, has meant that the tuning stability can sometimes be a little bit better if you are in a climate where it's just all over the map. Uh, the tighter, shorter bass string also makes it a little bit of a punchy attack down in the lower register, but a little less warmth, particularly when you're playing in the lower dynamic ranges. And so the U1's reputation as a reliable, um, albeit bright and a nice loud piano um, is as true today as it was back then. Now, some of the newer U1s and U3s have started to soften the voicing out of the factory, uh, which certainly has uh, lessened the impact of the attack, but the piano overall still has a bit of a treble bias to it. I'll just play you a little bit right now.
the action on the U1 uh, is pretty quick. Uh, it And in terms of the key dip, it's pretty average. It doesn't feel shallow, it doesn't feel deep. It's, it's uh, very much an average uh, you know, travel distance for the key. Um, the weighting on most U1s is actually also pretty average, although uh, the reputation tends to be that the Yamahas uh, are a little bit lighter in action. I think one of the reasons the reputation is that they feel light is that once you get over a certain threshold, um, the piano really uh, almost becomes overly active from a volume standpoint. You get loud on a Yamaha much quicker than you would on a Kawhi. The geometry on a Yamaha is designed to more easily produce a loud tone, whereas on the Kawhi it tends to be um, uh, uh, engineered to give more control in the lower ranges, but you actually have to give a little more energy to get maximum volume out. So it's a playing style uh, difference, uh, but for sure you wind up definitely at a higher uh, volume level with less effort on a Yamaha, and I think that's what causes people uh, to describe the instrument as a lighter touch because it's just giving you more than what you expected. So, like I said, depends on your playing style, but for certainly people who are, you know, into the Billy Joel or the Elton John. fine. You're going to love that nice bright sound and that's also a, it's a sound that we're very familiar with. Tons of studios uh, have used both Yamaha grants and uprights for that exact reason. Nice punchy clear tone uh, when you, particularly when you're doing something like pop uh, and or rock. There's another really interesting difference and I'm going to talk about more uh, talk more about it when we get in front of the Kawai. Uh, but as the K series and the U series have continued to sort of um, chart more different paths as we uh, go into the future. They really are diverging more and more from a spec standpoint. Um, another big difference, we already mentioned the string length and the soundboard being tapered versus not tapered, is the key stick length. Yamaha has maintained a, a fairly typical length of key stick on their upright, the U1 and the U3, uh, and it's been virtually unchanged since the 1970s. And that's one of the things where the K-series uh, has started to differ from instruments in its price category is they've really extended those key sticks for an upright piano, trying to uh, get the touch to be a little more like a grand uh, and, and certainly trying to minimize the difference between its controllability once you get further up into the key bed. So that's another critical difference. Um, for somebody who's just starting out, this is probably not going to be a very big deal. For somebody who is either a more advanced player or somebody who's going back and forth between say a teacher's grand piano and a practice piano, those longer key sticks on the Kwai may be something uh, that is an important consideration. So that's the U1. We're gonna pop over to the K300 now and talk about the differences uh, that you get out of that instrument as well. Uh, so thank you so much for being with us. We're gonna throw a few quick specs up on the screen for you to take a look at the U1 and then we'll head on over to the K300. So now we're in front of the Kawai K300, and this one happens to be white, but it is exactly the same on a technical basis as the one uh, which is available in black polish. So many differences between the K300 and the U1, uh, but a few obvious similarities. So this also is manufactured in Japan. It is also 48 inches in height, uh, and this is a piano which has evolved just like the current U1 has, out of instruments really which uh, were first developed way back in the late, late 1950s, early 1960s. I will say that generally speaking, Kawai is a company 
uh, is a little more prone to be constantly innovating their products. And I would say in the past that that has uh, led to some uh, inconsistent market perceptions uh, about the instruments and quite frankly, some inconsistent products. That really is uh, a, a reputation which is decades old at this point uh, from about the mid 2000s uh, on. So really the last 15 to 20 years, Akwai has just been cranking out unbelievably stellar product. Uh, and their uh, most recent K-series uh, update, which took their K3 and made it a K300, K5 as a K500, yada, 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 uh, incorporated a lot of the same uh, design innovations that they were doing on their GX Grand Series. And so uh, this has taken their K3, which um, besides the action was pretty similar uh, to, uh, to what a Yamaha U1 was. There may have been a slight tonal difference, but from a general design standpoint, they weren't dramatically different beasts. The K300, uh, on the other hand, has really been quite a departure uh, from what you would get in a Yamaha U1. And so we mentioned them when we were in front of that piano and we'll further mention them again. So uh, first thing is the scale design and the string length. So the K300, even though the box is the same height, uh, actually has a bass string which is several centimeters longer than what you get on the U1. So it's a slightly lower scale tension. The bass string is a bit longer. What does that give you? Well, it gives you more uh, warmth and a lot more uh, kind of a, a, a woolly um, a roundness uh, in your bass tones uh, than you would get on a tighter, shorter string. I don't know where that came from. Was that American Dream somewhere out there? Anyway, uh, so that's kind of um, one tonal aspect that you get that's a bit different uh, down in that bass string. And we're gonna get to show some B-roll so you can really see uh, how obvious it is uh, looking at the two lower parts of the piano uh, between that Yamaha bass string as well as the Kawhi bass string. Second meaningful difference is the soundboard and the fact that on the K300 you have a tapered soundboard, whereas in the Yamaha you have a non-tapered soundboard. What does the tapering do? Is it really that important? Um, well, what tapering does is it allows the soundboard generally to uh, become active with less energy. There's just less wood there, so you don't need as much energy to activate the piano. So it's the same thickness in the middle, but as you get out to the edges, it starts to thin out, which means that um, if you had the same sort of lower uh, dynamic uh, energy going into the uh, soundboard, um, a tapered soundboard is gonna activate more surface area than the non-tapered uh, soundboard. There's just less mass there to move, uh, and so it spreads close to the edges and you, you just get a little bit more warmth and a little bit more projection uh, when you're not really you know, putting a lot of energy into the piano. Once you get up into the upper dynamic ranges, tapered versus non-tapered tends to produce less of a difference uh, in the instrument's behavior. It's really obvious though in the lower dynamic ranges, which leads to the third difference we talked about, which is in the action. Now the biggest difference between Kawhi and Yamaha that everybody really used to focus on is this wood versus plastic debate, uh, which really is a bit of an antiquated debate at this point. Uh, everybody knows that Yamaha's actions are primar primarily uh, made of wood. They did use some synthetic components uh, in some of their actions, um, but it's a reliable design, it's a well-known design, uh, it really is, uh, you know, gives the user uh, kind of quick access to your upper dynamic ranges, uh, pretty decent repetition speed, and generally feels, or at least is perceived to feel, a little bit light. On the Kawhi side, uh, they've got their Millennium 3 Action, uses some carbon fiber infused parts, uh, but uh, which really just help with uh, kind of maintenance issues. It's less of a musical thing. The biggest thing from a musical standpoint on the Kawhi's Action is that it's geared to take advantage of that tapered soundboard, the whole geometry, and that extended key stick length uh, gives you more control in your lower dynamic ranges. Uh, and so that's one of the biggest uh, differences really that you get between playing these two instruments uh, is that Kawhi gives you a little more control in the lower ranges uh, and a lot more uh, shades of color between like your triple pianissimo up to say a forte. 
Um, but on the Yamaha, it's easier uh, to achieve that forte and fortissimo with less effort. So depending on the style of music you're playing, one might um, give you more of a desirable, you know, playing, you know, uh, profile, you know, a musical profile versus uh, the other. There's a few other minor, let's say, non-musical differences between the instruments. Um, one of them is that the K300 and actually the whole K series. I don't know who made this decision, but Thank you. Uh, for people who still use old school sheet music instead of their iPads, um, a nice wide music desk like this is a real benefit. Uh, this is, I don't know, it's probably close to six inches wider than what you get on most upright pianos. And so I can easily get like a five fold on a K300, whereas sometimes I'm struggling to like squeeze a four fold uh, on. So if you're somebody who uses a lot of sheet music or, you know, lots of taped together pages, if you're like me and, uh, you know, prefer that to the digital thing, you're going to love that. Both instruments have a soft uh, close uh, fall board on it. Uh, so that's kind of a nice feature if you've got uh, smaller kids uh, in the house. Uh, both have really high quality brass casters, uh, brass pedals, middle pedal is a mute rail on both. Uh, and of course the right pedal, uh, like every single piano we review, uh, is a sustain pedal. So hope that that has really helped to quickly clarify some of the most critical differences uh, between these two very, very popular models. Uh, if you are in the market for an upright piano and you're sort of in that $10,000 or less price category, and of course we're, I always uh, talk generally in US dollars even though we're up here in Canada, uh, if you're in that price category, uh, I would strongly suggest that these are uh, two instruments uh, to go check out if you haven't already been told by friends and teachers to do so. Uh, and if you can, uh, play them in the same showroom at the same time. It's the best way to get that side-by-side -side, uh, comparison. So thank you so much for joining us for the video today. Uh, we're going to give you a playing comparison video uh, of uh, the K300 as well. Uh, so you can get a really nice up-to-date 2020 uh, listen to what this instrument has to offer. And if it's the first time to the channel, we would also really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button and become part of our ever-growing community of piano lovers and piano appreciators. We love the comments and we'd love to see you back for more views. So thank you so much for watching. My name is Stu Harrison. This has been the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel and we'll see you again soon.